This is a comparison of the best online Bible softwares available. All online Bible softwares are free, but some have an option to pay for a few more resources. Online Bible softwares are an excellent way to compare multiple translations, or search for the meaning behind a Greek or Hebrew word, or take notes, or look up a verse in some commentaries. The first online Bible software I want to cover is Blue Letter Bible. It's free and it has minimal ads, which are chosen by them. This software has 21 Bibles and quite a few other books and resources. Once you select a verse, you will be in the main screen. I'll go over some of the more useful menu buttons. You can click on the Quick Nav button or the down arrows to choose a book and chapter instead of typing it in. If you want to copy multiple verses, you have to check the double squares next to each verse and click Copy. If you click Copy Options, you can change the format it will be copied in. You can choose Paragraph View if you want a better reading view, but it only works on some Bibles. You can show or hide the Strong's numbers for certain Bibles with the Strong's button. Some Bibles have red letters for the words of Jesus, which can be turned on or off. You can listen to an audio Bible, which will start reading from chapter the chapter three. you are currently on, but it won't turn to the next chapter, so you will have to do that manually. If you click the Big Bible Version button, you can change Bibles while staying on your current chapter. If you want to remember your current settings, you can create an account with an email and password. There are several ways to view and compare Bibles on this software. In the paragraph or verse view, you have access to some tools, which show more information about your current verse. If you are in the paragraph view, you have to hover your mouse over the verse to see the tool's options. Some of the tools worth using are the interlinear, which has multiple views. The forward and forward inline views keep the Greek or Hebrew word order while the reverse and reverse inline view keep the English Bible's word order. In Greek, the word doesn't matter as much because the endings of the words often show how they relate to the words around them. I prefer the inline option because you can customize what information is shown. The Bibles tab is the only way to compare multiple Bible versions to each other. You can rearrange the Bibles by clicking and dragging them. The cross-reference tab shows all the scripture verses related to your current verse. The commentaries and dictionaries tabs don't have much to offer in my opinion. The miscellaneous tab sometimes has maps or timelines relating to the current verse. The other way to view the Bible is the interlinear view, which is located in the study tab under inline interlinear. It can also be opened from the main Bible view under Tools, Interlinear, Inline, and Full Page. There are only a handful of different English, Greek, and Hebrew combinations to choose from in the interlinear. Again, you can choose either Greek, Hebrew, or English word order, and you can choose what type of information you want to see in the interlinear. If you click the Bible button, it will take you back to the main Bible view. One of the features I really like is the ability to click on morphology and see a brief explanation of what it means. All the inline Bibles show morphology. It can also be seen in the Greek and Hebrew Bibles by clicking on a word. You can search for an English, Greek, or Hebrew word or phrase in all Bibles by typing it into the main search bar. The results for each Bible will be shown on the right in the yellow section. You can limit your search to Old or New Testament or a book of the Bible by clicking the Advanced Options button above the main search bar. Blue Letter Bible comes with a handful of Greek and Hebrew lexicons, which can be searched by clicking on a Strong's number and scrolling down till you see the lexicon sections. You can see all the ways a Greek or Hebrew word is translated into English by clicking on the Strong's number and scrolling down to the KJV translation count section. 
you can also view all the Greek and Hebrew words used to translate an English word by going to the lexicon section located in the study tools and typing in the English word you want to know about. There are maps in the study tab. They are just pictures and can't be searched, but the miscellaneous tab under tools will sometimes link maps to the verse you are on. There are also timelines, which are also located in the study tab, and these two are sometimes linked to your current verse in the miscellaneous tab in the tools menu. There are some beginner courses on the Greek and Hebrew language, which are located in the study tab under grammars. There are no note-taking abilities in the desktop version of Blue Letter Bible, although they do have a sister site, which is specifically designed for note-taking. It is located in the Apps and Tools under Scripture Mark. You can also take notes in the phone app version of Blue Letter Bible. Some of the other noteworthy features are the ability to look up multiple verses at one time, as long as they are separated by semicolons. There is a feature that pronounces most Greek or Hebrew words if you click on the Strong's number and click on the Volume button on the Pronunciation tab. There is a downloadable version of the software for your computer under the Apps and Tools called BLBCD. It doesn't have all the features that the online version has. There is a Gospel Harmony tool that lets you see where multiple Gospels talk about the same story. This can be found in the Study tab under Harmony of the Gospels. There is also a Bible Reading Plan located in the Devotionals tab under Daily Bible Reading Program. Bible Hub is a free online Bible software with over 100 resources currently available, including 43 English Bibles, 8 Greek Bibles, 4 Hebrew Bibles, and over 30 commentaries. It does have some secular ad pop-ups, so I recommend installing an ad blocking extension for your web browser. I use Ghostry for Chrome. Just remember that some sites like YouTube may make you sign a user agreement not to use ad blockers. So I make an exception rule for those sites. In Ghostry, you can just click Trust Site and it won't block ads on that site. But each extension is different. If you don't like it, you can always turn any extension off or uninstall it under Manage Extensions. Bible Hub is pretty straightforward. Most of its options are displayed on the main screen. I'll briefly explain them. You can look up a Bible verse by clicking on the top drop-down. You can change Bibles from the drop-down on the right, and it will stay on your current chapter. In the search bar, you can choose the category you want to search for from the drop-down on the right. You can search for a verse reference, or a word, or a phrase, or a Greek or Hebrew word or phrase. If nothing shows up, you can choose a different category by clicking on one of the buttons that will show up after you search for something. All the Bibles listed in the next row do not have Strong's tagging. You can choose a Bible with tagging from the Bible drop-down or the hamburger icon on the top right of the screen. Any tagged Bible will show information about the Greek or Hebrew when you hover your mouse over a word or click on it. This is a good time to mention that if you hover your mouse over any tab, you can see a more detailed description of what's in it. I should also mention that although each tab has something unique about it, half of them have duplicate information, which is repeated in other tabs. You'll hear me say this a lot, but each tab will show information relating to your current verse when you click on it. The Parallel tab shows you the verse you are on in over 40 English translations. You can also compare two Bibles side by side if you click on certain Bibles and then click on the Parallel button on the right. Only the Bibles shown in the Parallel list can be compared to each other. If you click on one of the Bibles from the Parallel list, it will compare it to your current Bible. The Sermons tab shows a list of written sermons about your current verse. The Audio tab allows you to play the audio for either the chapter or full book you are currently on. There are multiple text-to-speech voices to Romans choose from. One.
If you click on the pop-out audio player, you can read along as the Paul, audio is a registered. Servant of Christ Jesus. The Visuals tab shows any maps or pictures relating to your current verse. The Commentary tab shows all the commentaries relating to your current verse. Each blue heading is a different commentary. You can also go directly to your favorite commentary by choosing it from the list on top. The Interlinear tab shows an interlinear based off of the original language. Unfortunately, you can't choose what information is shown on any of the interlinears. The Hebrew or Greek tabs will change depending on if you're in the New or Old Testament. It is the same thing as the interlinear tab, just in a different format. The Lexicon tab shows information relating to the original language of your current verse. But ironically, the best way to look up Lexicon information about a verse is to open a Bible with Strong's tagging and click on the word you want to see. This will show both the Strong's and Thayer's lexicons, and the NAS Exhaustive Concordance will show all the ways the original language word you clicked on is translated into English in the New American Standard Bible. The Strong's tab is basically the same thing as the Lexicon tab, just in a different format. The Multilingual tab compares tons of Bibles from multiple languages for the verse you are currently on. The Chapter Summary tab shows a chapter summary and other key information about your current chapter. The Bible Book Outline tab shows a summary about the current book you are on. The Timeline tab will show you when your current chapter was likely written. If you click the Complete Bible Timeline button, you can view a list of dates for the main events in the books of the Bible. The Bible Study Questions tab has a list of questions for the current chapter you are on. There are questions for every chapter in the Bible, so this could be a nice way to do a Bible study with some friends. The Topics and Themes tab is basically the same thing as the Summary tab, showing information about your current chapter. The Book by Book tab is basically the same thing as the Outline tab, showing information about your current book. The Parallel Chapters tab compares five different versions of the Bible to each other. Unfortunately, you can't change which versions they are. The Parallel English tab shows two tagged resources, an English Bible and a Greek or Hebrew Bible. So you can hover your mouse over any words or click on them to see more information about them. The Treasury of Scripture Knowledge tab shows all the Bible verses that your current verse references or relates to. The Library tab has a list of random books you can read for free. The Apostolic Bible Polyglot tab is the same thing as the Greek, Hebrew, or interlinear tabs, just in a different format. The LXX, or Septuagint, or Hebrew tab depending on if you're in the New or Old Testament, will show either the Greek Old Testament or the Hebrew New Testament. One other thing worth noting is that you can read the English translation of the Peshitta, which is based off of the Syriac manuscripts dating from around the 5th century AD. Bible Gateway is an online Bible software with over 85 books available for free, 70 of which are Bibles. It also has a paid version which gives you access to about 30 additional books. The free version has lots of ads, so I recommend downloading an ad blocking extension. To search for a Bible reference or a word or phrase, you need to first select a Bible from the drop down on the right. You can also search for a Bible reference from the Bible book list drop down underneath the main search bar. There is also an advanced search if you go to the Read Bible tab. The advanced search lets you search through up to five Bibles at a time, and you can also look up up to five references at a time. Once you look up a verse on the main screen, you can compare up to five Bibles by clicking on the double page icon under the search bar. You can change the versions by clicking on their names and selecting from the list. Unfortunately, none of the free Bibles have tagging, so you can't see the Greek or Hebrew behind an English word. 
There is some kind of tagged interlinear Bible if you buy a monthly subscription, but I don't know how good it is. Many of the Bibles have an audio version, which can be heard by clicking the speaker icon next to the parallel button. Unfortunately, there isn't a great way to read along with the audio. If you click the gear icon, you can show or hide verse numbers, cross-references, and a few other things for the Bibles you have open. To the right of the Bible, there is a collapsible tab where you can look up things relating to your current verse. Any resources with a blue plus under them are only available if you buy their monthly subscription. I'll cover the main things I like to use in this collapsible tab section. If you click on the encyclopedias or dictionaries tabs, you will see a list of books that have information about your current chapter. The number of entries below each book is the amount of definitions that book has relating to your current chapter. The commentaries tab shows all the commentaries that have something about your current chapter. The number of entries below each commentary is the amount of sections or verses that commentary has about your current chapter. If you really like a certain commentary or dictionary, you can open it and click the pin icon on the right. This will add it to the pinned resources tab. The maps tab is only for paid subscribers. Also, the Hebrew slash Greek tab, which is an interlinear Bible, is only for subscribers. The Your Content tab is for creating verse notes. You don't need a subscription to use it, but you do need to create a free account with an email and password. To create a note, you have to select a verse and click the pen icon. Once you've created your note, there will be a pen icon on that verse, which you can click to open your note. You can also highlight a section by selecting it and clicking a color. There are several Greek and Hebrew Bibles, but they are not tagged, so there is no way to see morphology or other information about them. There are no lexicons or Greek and Hebrew courses in the software either. There is also no timelines available. It does have a free Bible reading plan, which is located under the Read the Bible tab on the left. NETBible.org is a free online Bible software with no ads. It has 11 Bibles and over 10,000 articles which are tied to your current chapter. It has two main sections, one for the Bible and one for Bible research, which is synced to the Bible section. In the Bible section, you can choose a verse from the drop-down, or you can type it into the search bar on the right. You can change versions from the drop-down, but the NET is the only version with tagging and cross-highlighting. You can look through your bookmarks by clicking the icon. You can change text size with the double A. You can listen to your current chapter by clicking the speaker icon, but it's only the NET version. There are several different Bible reading plans to choose from if you click the daily button. If you click on a verse, you will get some options, but some of them require you to create a free account using an email and password. You can highlight a verse by clicking it, selecting highlight, choosing a color, and selecting either underline or solid. You can add a note to a verse by clicking on a word and selecting Note. The notes you create will be shown by an icon, but there isn't a way to see all your notes at one time. You can bookmark a verse by clicking on it and selecting the flag icon. You can see all your bookmarks by the icon I showed earlier. You can search for your current verse in all Bibles by clicking on it and choosing Parallel. In the NET tagged Bible, you can see the Greek or Hebrew behind an English word by clicking on it and clicking the magnifying glass and clicking word search. This will show the Strong's lexicon definition for that word. You can see all the ways that a Greek or Hebrew word is used in the NET Bible by clicking on it and clicking the magnifying glass and clicking Strong search. In the research section, there is a notes tab which shows the notes from the NET Bible when you click on the little blue numbers on a verse. It also displays your personal notes for your current chapter. The Bibles tab is a way to compare multiple Bible versions to each other. If you click on the little arrow next to it, you can choose what Bibles to compare.
The Greek and Hebrew tab is one of my favorite features because it has cross-highlighting when you hover your mouse over a word. It will automatically sync to your current chapter. If you hover your mouse over a Greek, Hebrew, or English word, you can see information about it, including morphology, tagging, transliteration, which is how to pronounce it, root, which is the basic Greek or Hebrew word used to create that Greek or Hebrew word, and it also shows the Strong's range of meaning for that Greek or Hebrew word. If you click on the highlighted word, the information pop-up will stay open, and you have to click it again to close that pop-up. The Library tab will sync to your current chapter showing relative articles or journal entries, which are writings from random people relating to your current chapter. It also shows information about the names and places mentioned in your chapter. The Maps tab is not synced to your current chapter or searchable. It's full of satellite pictures. The Search tab shows results from the search bar above it. You can search for a scripture reference or a word or phrase. The results are split into categories. The Bible tab has some options to show either the exact phrase or some of the words in it. You can also choose which testament or book of the Bible you want to see results for. The Notes tab is from the NET Bible, and the Bible.org and Journals tabs show results from random people for your current search. I want to show a few more free online Bible softwares worthy of mention. ESV.org is a clean way to listen to an audio Bible. You can choose if you want any background music, and you can change the volume of the music and the audio separately. Does their faithlessness it will automatically scroll as you listen. It also has nice Greek or Hebrew interlinears with customizable fields to show or hide things like lemma, transliteration, or morphology. In the interlinear view, you can click on any word and see more information about it. GreekBible.com is a quick way to see information about the Greek New Testament. If you just look up one verse, you can see an English translation underneath the Greek. But if you click on the whole chapter, you can only view the Greek. If you click on a word, it will show a lexicon and morphology for it. Bible.com is a nice way to compare any two English Bible versions to each other. It has over 70 versions available. Bible.is is the only way you can watch a video of the Bible as you listen. The video option is only available for the four Gospels. I made a chart to compare the main features of each software. As you can see, each software has its pluses and minuses. For total overall features, it's pretty much a tie between Blue Letter Bible and Bible Hub, but neither of these have the ability to save notes. Each software has something unique about it. For example, netbible.org is the only software that highlights words between Bibles. Bible.is is the only software with synced video for the Gospels. And Blue Letter Bible is the only software with explanations for morphology. Thank you to all those involved in making these softwares, and God bless.